you just heard that default typing sound of the Galaxy 70 from Epo Maker. And it's easily the creamiest keyboard I've tested, especially coming from someone whose main keyboard is the Ola F75. The specific model we have here is the Galaxy 70 in grey color with Wano Blossom Odyssey Switch. However, you can also get this in Epo Maker Zebra Switch in blue and black pink colors. Right off the bat, this is a US$99 wireless mechanical keyboard on Epo Maker's website. It's not yet available in the Philippines and I have no word yet regarding any local release, but conversion wise, it's around 5,000 pesos. For that price, you're looking at a mid range keyboard already. While it's not affordable, it's also not as expensive as the Tide 75. But if you have the budget for the Galaxy 70, I would say it's worth buying for two things, the switch and the color. There is one small but significant drawback with the Galaxy 70 however, but depending on your use, this might be the perfect choice. That drawback immediately occurs when switching between Mac and Windows. Since I now have the option to use both Mac and Windows with one external monitor, I might as well get one of the best sounding and best feeling keyboards for both major operating systems right now. I noticed when switching between the two, either the Windows or Alt key would stop working correctly. I mean, the keys still work when you press them, but they don't work when you start using them with shortcut keys like switching windows or desktops. The only fix I found is by turning off and on the keyboard as if it did a restart to sort itself out. And it's a consistent thing. The good thing, however, is it's easy to do so since all you need is to toggle the switch behind the keyboard. Now, usually you switch between dongle and Bluetooth mode, but here you have on and off options only meaning you use wired mode through USB-C when the keyboard is off. In wireless mode, you use shortcut keys to switch between dongle and Bluetooth. It's a minor adjustment, not a big deal, but consider it one of the things you need to memorize on top of all the lighting and multimedia shortcuts. Let's talk about the typing experience. If you need the details regarding the exact travel and actuation force and all that stuff, here you go. The Wano Blossom Odyssey switch is a linear type with factory lubing and compatible with 3 and 5 pin switches. Even the plate mounted stabilizer comes pre lubed, hence the quieter, stabler, and more consistent taps when pressing long keycaps. I mean, if you are one of the people who scheme when it comes to inconsistent, rattling space bars and enters, the Galaxy 70 completely removes that. Just listen to this. Epo Maker states there are five layers of sound dampening materials to achieve this creamy or quiet but thawky typing experience. But regardless of the construction, they have done a great job in delivering what keyboard enthusiasts want, and they've been doing it consistently well. Like other keyboards, this one has RGB and south facing LEDs. The keycaps are still non transparent, but there is a light bar indicator for charging, modes, and low battery notification. Also, because the switch is pink, the white LED reflects a soft pink glow so you can't get that pure white backlighting unless you change the color of the switch. Speaking of battery, the Galaxy 70 houses a 4000mAh cell, which in my testing only lasts 4-5 to five days when at 50% intensity. With no RGB, you can stretch that to a whole week. As far as other keyboards with the same battery size, this is below average. The software on the Galaxy 70 uses Epo Maker driver for customizations. Interestingly, the keyboard can sync with music, but for functions, you only have that function layer. I'm also not a fan of the interface's look, so I hope that changes soon. But overall, it's okay, but it feels like it's behind others when it comes to features and intuitiveness. The build itself looks neat, clean, and cute. This gray variant reminds me of the old keyboard from the 90s, which by today's standards, fits well in cozy looking setups. I'm not calling it gray color because it's really off-white more than gray. The Galaxy 70 does have a smooth metal knob for volume adjustment, but it's not customizable nor supports any secondary functions. Let me tell you this though, it's the most satisfying knob click ever.
Additionally, it's interesting to see the dongle tucked away underneath this metal cover that magnetically attaches to the keyboard. That's neat. Like other newly released keyboards in 2024, we're starting to see the absence of the adjustable typing angle. Here, you have a fixed 70 degree angle thanks to the combination of the keyboard base and the large silicone pads that keep the keyboard fixed and stable. Is this a problem? Not really, unless you really have a specific typing angle. One more thing worth noting is the overall weight of the Galaxy 70 which clocks in at 1.8 kilograms, making it the heaviest keyboard I've tested on this channel. You can check the links in the description if you want to buy the Galaxy 70, but that's about it for this keyboard. This is a strong contender as a replacement for my Ala F75 since it has a better build and a great thocky typing experience. The only thing that's keeping me from switching is that I switched to ceramic keycaps with the F75. You can also check that video to see how cream or thocky that keyboard sounds when paired with ceramic keycaps. But that's it for this one. Drop a sub or like if you feel like supporting the channel. And as always, until the next one, stay safe.